So the next topic which we are going to explore is something which is very intuitive and something which you already have been exposed to. These are beams under bending but also at the same time they have some axial load acting within the beam. Now as we had seen before that for these kinds of beams what we need to do is that we have the bending stresses due to the due to the very nature that of the bending action itself and in addition to that we need to add or subtract the axial stresses which is caused by the axial load. So let's go ahead and take a look into that and after which we'll solve a problem example. And so essentially you're looking at you know beams with axial loading and as you can see from here itself so this is something which is quite obvious so if you have a beam where if you have a load which is acting you can replace the load with an equivalent load right we're acting at the centroid and a, a particular moment depending upon the eccentricity now this is one of the cases where you can have a beam with uh, axial loading which also causes a moment the other cases can be that you have the beam where a moment is already being being applied and on top of that you're applying another axial load so let's go ahead go ahead and take a look at you know some of the some of such examples which which can which can occur in you know uh, in structure so okay so this is this is the the easiest to understand and the simplest and the classic case the most classic case that you have so here you see you have a beam which is and now again now we are done with composite sections we are now going back to beams which have uh, you know the the material is homogeneous across the entire length and the width of the beam that is there right so now for the beam that you have uh, so i am applying a sagging kind of a moment something like this over here now in addition to that there is an axial load so essentially it's an action which is happening something like this right so as a consequence of this if we take a look at the stresses how do the you know the the stresses look like or how do the stresses vary let's see now due to this bending moment m or uh, yeah so you, this is the overall stress distribution that you have so this is due to the axial load so this is uh, maybe we can write this is due to the p that you have over here right this is p divided by a now you see here the p acts exactly at the centroid and what we have seen in our chapter on axial loading is that when p acts at the centroid there that means the stress distribution must be uniform across the cross section and that is what you see over here so stress distribution is uniform right now this is due to the p and this is due to the pure bending m because you have an m and m so you have this you know this phenomenon of pure bending where across the length of the member the bending moment doesn't change so this is due to the m that we have over here now as you can imagine since uh, so this is like the method of superposition where you're taking the moment and looking at it separately taking the axial load and looking at it separately once you combine them this is the joint stress distribution that you have now as you see that here the load p that you had applied was tensile so the tensile arrows have increased in length and the compressive arrows have decreased in length so it can this can be one of the cases where your entire section does not have any amount of compression it's it's completely under tension over here now as you can rightly say that it of course it depends upon the magnitude of p that you have over here for example you can have a case like this as well so you have the same due to p and you have due to m over here but again depending upon the magnitude maybe you are not able to nullify all of the compressive forces maybe you have a large amount of tensile force at the bottom and depending upon how much of these uh, tensile force did you have due to the, the the pulling action due to the axial load you can have the combined loading something like this so you can have a very tiny amount of compressive load at the top and large amount of tensile loads at the bottom and in between as you can understand the neutral axis will shift right now the neutral axis remember the neutral axis coincides with the centroid only in the case of the pure bending and that too when the material is homogeneous throughout now by the very definition the neutral axis is the axis about which you do not have any stress or you do not have any strain or for that matter any deformation so as you see in this figure over here this is the point where you do not have any stress or any particular strain so the neutral axis which was initially at the center over here it now shifts under the action of this uh, combined loading where you have bending as well as the axial loading right now one important thing to note over here is that your this stress over here is uniform throughout why because p it acts as the center right so here maybe we make a quick note that here it acts at centroid 
right so since it acts at the centroid you are having you know this sigma x as as a as a uniform distribution now um, for this particular case what we just saw if we now just have to write the, our sigma if we just go back to the previous slide so here remember that what we are used to writing that our sigma x is essentially or p divided by a for this one and for this one we had seen that our sigma x is equal to minus of m y by i again don't be too bogged down with the signs and everything try to have a you know logical sorry let me just uh, rewrite that slightly below it overlapped with my camera so here sigma x equals to minus m y by i again don't be bogged down with the signs and everything always make a logical judgment about the sign so all i am saying is that once we have this load so once we, you combine the effects of both the bending as well as the axial you can write your sigma x equals to p divided by a minus m y by i over here right so this is the overall symbol so uh, as you see that the top part which was in which is in compression and the bottom part is in tension that since the p is here is tensile so this is positive over here and this is what we had derived so this is positive this turns out to be positive when you have a tensile because you are taking the y from the neutral axis below so negative and negative becomes positive for you know the drill you have already done this okay now so this was the case where p acts exactly at the centroid of the cross section now you may have a case that so this is the case where you have the moment and the p acts exactly at the at the uh, centroid of the cross section now what happens if it acts as an eccentricity you can guess it already essentially what you do in this case so this is the case where you have this moment m over here and you have this load p but then this load p now it acts at a certain uh, eccentricity e over here so as you can understand what you are have to do here you have to shift this at point of action of this load p from here to the centroid now because of after shifting the load p to the centroid you will have a uniform stress distribution but in addition to shifting the load p you have to also have to add a moment that is p times e that is there so we essentially at that particular point you have a net moment which is m you know minus p that is there and you have that axial force that is acting so it overall it looks something like this so you have this beam you have this m and m over here and this is the load p which is acting at this eccentricity e you are going ahead and shifting this load p from here to the centroid this p over here and as a consequence of that take a look at the sign you are going from this p to here so you are having a clockwise kind of a moment so p times this moment arm that is e so you are going on a clockwise moment so you have a clockwise direction so that gives the result of your clockwise moment in this direction and the anti-clockwise in this direction because to balance you have to have to have the p in this particular direction over here right so now that you have this one how is the formula going to change let's let's we have already seen how what the formula is because of this p and this because of this m in the previous page so let's just write the revised formula is going to be p divided by a minus of m y divided by i now in addition to that i have this clockwise moment you know this is over here so for that the moment arm for that is p times e and the arm from the neutral axis is still going to be the same that is y divided by i over here this part is the additional moment so i hope this is clear and it's it is very intuitive once you understand axial loading by itself you understand bending by itself it's it's easily a piece of cake to put these two together and to look at systems which are subjected to the joint action of the bending as well as the axial load now uh, with this understanding and again do not be bogged down by the signs have a logical interpretation of the problem compression is typically negative tension is typically positive so find out those individual stresses and then you decide that whether you want to attach a positive or a negative sign to that so we will look at one particular example problem will specifically deals with that and we will reinforce the ideas which we studied in this particular topic